Welcome to everyone. Today we're learning Zera Shimshon, Parashat Vayeral Eret Edvav. This shiur is being sponsored by Nisoni Yadgarov, Elisha Yadgarov, and all the Yadgarov families. Hashem should give them Barachah Vatzlacha Lehelu Nishmat. Tamara Bad Leah. Tamara Bad Leah. And also, Lehelu Nishmat, your father-in-law, Bukhor Baris Ben Dora, Vagam Elazar Ben Tamara, Vagam Kona Nitam, Vagam Chizkiah Gal Ben Tamara, Vagam Kona Nitani Ma Nitarot, Vagam Efraim Ben Malka, Vagam. And also, we would like to say, I agree with you. Amen. <coughs> And this Zerah Shimshon, Be'ezrat Hashem, the Neshama of Zerah Shimshon should pray to Hashem, and Be'ezrat Hashem, our President Donald Trump, should win. Amen. And we'll see Be'ezrat Hashem how today, we'll see a few hints from Zerah Shimshon how Donald Trump will win, Be'ezrat Hashem. Before I go further, there's a lady who sponsored our shiur <coughs> many times. From LA, she asked me a question. If Abraham Avinu had 100% Emunah and Bitachon to Hashem, <coughs> and Sarah Emenu has 100% Emunah and Bitachon to Hashem, why would she tell Abraham Avinu to marry Hagar? Why would Sarah Emenu tell Abraham Avinu to marry Hagar? <laughs> Why would Sarai Menu tell Avram Avinu to marry Hagar? Ah, there's no bitachon? What's going on here? Good question. To get married to Hagar. They have bitachon, no? <coughs> the answer is... <coughs> honestly, I was thinking long about this answer. And I'm sorry if the answer will not accommodate the person who asked the question. <coughs> but I tried my best. <coughs> Gemara says, Avram Avinu and Sarai Avinu were both barren. Mm -hmm. Then Avram Avinu prayed. Hashem answered him, you will have children. Then Sarai Menu told Avram Avinu to marry Hagar. Why? To show Avram Avinu the power of Brit Mila. You could have children from a thousand different wives. But if you want to have children from Sarah Imenu, you only have to have Brit Mila. If you don't have Brit Mila, you are not going to have child from Sarah Imenu and you will not have Yitzchak Avinu. So therefore, Avram Avinu did not make Brit Mila. He married Hagar. Hagar gave right away baby Ishmael. But to have it's Chagavinu from Eshet, Eshet, Chal, Sarai, Emenu. You have to have Brit Milah only. So therefore, Avram Avinu made 99 years old Brit Milah. And 100 years old, he had son from Sarai, Emenu. Because of the Chud of Brit Milah, it's Chagavinu. That is my answer. If, I, if that answer does not touch her, then I have another proof. What's the proof? How do you say this mitzvah? Brit. Bar Yud Tav. Bar Yud Tav. Yud Tav is abbreviation of Yid Barach. Yud Tav is Gimatre 410. 410 is Gimatre Kadosh. This is why Yitzchak Avinu was San Kadosh. And that's the proof. You want to have San Kadosh? You have to have Brit Milah. No Brit Milah, you cannot have child who is Kadosh. Yitzchak Avinu, only through Brit Milah. This is what Hashem showed Avram Avinu. Ah, you ask me, why to wait 100 years old? Why 100 years old? Remember, we, and Rosh Hashanah said, from Aleph to Tav, put all the gematrias without zeros, you'll get to number 100. Mm -hmm. Remember that we did? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. How? How it happens? Because the whole power of Torah is what? Aleph to Tav. And Aleph to Tav, you combine everything, comes out later 100, comes out number 100. And therefore Hashem said, I want it. How? You know, there's a light bulb. I remember 20 years ago, working, 18 years ago, working in the light, light store over there. There's a light bulb called Full Spectrum. If I understand in my language, it means a light bulb that has full light inside, fully like, full, full, now, full spectrum means what? It's a full power, no? Full spectrum. 
Uh, whatever is that? Whatever is that? So, what does that mean? If you want Yitzchak Avinu to be full spectrum of Torah, that only when is when Abraham Avinu is hundred years old. Abraham Avinu could have had him fifteen years old boy, you know, twenty year old boy. No, Hashem said you want full full koach of Torah, kedusha da Torah, only when you hundred. Only when you hundred. This is why Parsha called lech lecha gimatre hundred. You know, now it makes sense everything. What? That answers the question of having the bread. To have, the, to have a baby. Yeah. What about for Hagar? Why did he go to Hagar? That's the whole point. That's the whole point. Simple answer is, Hashem showed him, if you want to have baby from Sarah, you have to wait till you have breed. If you want to have baby from anybody, but there is a Zohar says, in order to get, to get Kiddusha, you have to first close the Sitra, Hara, mouth. I'll give you proof. On Yom Kippur, how many goats you bring korban? You bring two korban. One is La Hashem, one is La Azazel. You close Satan's mouth. If you don't close Satan's mouth, you can't get korban La Hashem. You understand? So same thing. To close Satan's mouth, Yed Ishmael. To get Kedusha, Yed Yitzchak You understand? Ah, why waited so long? Because he didn't have the good to do breed. After he did breathe, then Sarai Menu got pregnant. But he knew he had to do breathe, no? Before we had him. 100%. Abraham Avinu knew to do breathe when he was 10 years old, 15 years old, okay? But Why he waited till 100? Because Brit Mila is one time thing. If you do when you're not commanded, it's worth a penny. When you do when you command it, it's called the whole Atora Kulo. It's called, it, it's worth the whole Torah. So therefore, Gadola It's better when you are commanded to do the mitzvah and you do the mitzvah, then you do it. We do it without the mitzvah, you being without being commanded. So same thing. So if Abraham Avinu would do when he was 20, and Hashem told him, Abraham Avinu, I want you to do now when you're 100. He says, oh, I did already. So that's, that's not the same power. That, that, that's not the same Kedusha. But okay. when he was, let's say, 10 or 30 years old, Abraham Avinu already knew that when he was going to be 100, he was going to do a breach. He did not know when 100. He said, I will wait till Hashem tell me. But he knew that a breach, circumcision had to be done. 100%. So of course. Of course. Huh? Why he keep the Torah? Because him keeping the Torah, that was allowed for him. Why? Because for him, Hashem did not say you have to have Brit Milah when you're eight years old. Me and you keep the Torah without Brit Milah, it's zero. Why? Because we have to do Brit Milah when we are eight, eight days old. You didn't do Brit Milah eight days old, every day you live without Brit Milah, you get sin. Does the Torah talk about Brit before our money? Why did Hashem... Never. Why did Hashem let it, let it go so far? Huh? A hundred. He should have done yeah, it. Yeah, you could have like ten kids. Like hey, we gave the answer already. Hey, we gave the answer already. <laughs> that they had to be hundred because from Aleph to Tav we said all the letters. But this is Zohar answer. I'll give you Pshat. Pshat. You want a Pshat? Pshat is like this. <clears throat> How many Gerim Avram Avinu had? Many. In the beginning, one thousand. When he was 20, 2,000. When he was 30, 4,000. When he was 100, when he was 99, 200, he went to fight with the war, remember? To save Lot? Mm -hmm. That time, he get the majority get him. This is why Shem, son of Noah, came out and said, listen, give me the souls and I'll give you the money. Abraham said, hey, 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 no. If I give you these people, you're not going to make them so much closer to Hashem. He didn't do it. Gemurim, then I would, huh? Listen good. Listen good. Avram Avinu. I read it. I read it. Yesterday night. The question is, <clears throat> when did Avram Avinu get majority of the Gerim? The majority of the Gerim he got at the day of Brid Milah. Why? Because when you talk about Hashem, you talk already for 70 years. What do I care you talk about Hashem? But when you go and you sacrifice your body, when you old man to Hashem, that shows whatever you say, you mean it 100%. That is real. That is real. Why? Because you give your surgery when you are in danger, 90, 100 years old, 99 years old. That is already shows that you did what? It's called Mesirut Nefesh. You sacrifice your soul. That what brought more thousands of people that day to do Brit Mila. This is why Ramavino was standing and giving people Brit Mila left and right.
Since then, other day and another day and another day, it was it was going. It was going. Brimila never stopped playing. Why? Because people saw he does. He doesn't talk. You know. Today, go. I'll tell you one thing. Two, three missionaries come to your house and say, "You, you, 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 you okay? Chazak Baruch, stop. Open up. I'm gonna give you circumstances. If you really mean about God, He's gonna give you circumstances. Before you open your eyes and close, He's gonna be three hundred miles away from you. This is the Stop. When you talk about Hashem, we talk about Brit. You don't talk about Brit, then you talk about uh, you talk about uh, Gechka. Go 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 to your Gechka. So Avram Avinu, he did Brit Mila when he was huh? He was the Moel. There was two Moalim by Avram Avinu. He was Moel and Hashem was Moel. There's no opinion. Huh? Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu was doing the Brit Mila to everybody. But there's a, a lot of opinions say there was Brit Mila, but there was no Priya, there was no okay. twisting until Moshe Rabbeinu you know came. If, if missionaries don't need Brit Mila, what's the point of asking them to do a Brit? If missionaries don't need Brit Mila, A, they do need Brit Mila in their tongue, number one. Number one. <laughs> number, one uh, number two, number two, number two, they need, they need some screws to be put in the place, proper place. And number three, number three, you should know one thing. You should know one thing. For life, for life. I'll tell you, I, I know I know. people will listen to this, they're going to run off me, but I'll tell you one thing. Hashem cured me today. I had very terrible heartburn. I don't know why. Uh, but Hashem cured me. I want to give you one secret. I know you'll be upset at me, but I have to teach you this. I have to tell you this. Listen to me. To go house to house and to talk against Hashem, against Torah, you got to be extra chutzpah like snake was. Once they do that, there's no doubt that they lived with any other Goyim. Any Jew lives with Goya, he, you know, there's a breed Mila of Avram Avinu that father says to his son, father says to his son, during breed Mila, father says to his son, during Mila, Lachniso Bivrito Shel Avram Avinu, and he does Piri'ah. Any Jew goes and lives with Goya, he goes and that Goya helps him to cover the Piri'ah back. And therefore, it will not help him this breed Mila when he leaves the world by the gate of Avram, by the gate of Gan Eden, Avram Avinu won't be able to save him. Why? Avram Avinu will say, well, you have breed Mila, you had, but the, the fact you lived with Goya, mm -hmm. she helped you to cover it up. So same thing, the guy who is going as a missionary to go against Torah and against Hashem, there's no doubt he lived with Goya. He goes against the Brit Milah of Avraham Avinu, and this Brit Milah is not going to save him. So therefore, anyone, anyone in his lifetime, if he did any mistake, anyone who listens to the Shur, if he did any mistake with Goya in his lifetime, he should know until today, his Brit Milah is not going to protect him until he makes Teshuvah. He has to stop everything. He has to make Teshuvah that he made such a Avera, and that will put it back his Priya, and Be'ezad Hashem, mm -hmm. one day, when he will need help of his Brit, he's going to help him, it means to say that even in Olam Abba, to get up after 120, when Mashiach comes, when Mashiach comes today, some people say everyone will pass away and then we'll get up. How will they get up? With the help of our Aminu. Big Derechez, I see around here. Very good, nice, perfect, perfect. With the help of our Aminu, to do the Brit Milah. But if person was going around and not keeping Shmirat Abrit, it's not going to help him. So guys, Rabbi Ilan is getting upset. Come on, we're going to start by... <coughs> we're gonna finish by 10. We haven't started yet. Can we start? Any questions? Any questions? Don't let me die. You know? Okay. Uh, by the way, from those people from LA, if they don't like the answer, <coughs> please text me one more time your question. Maybe I didn't understand properly your question and we'll be, be able to give another answer. Let's go further. <coughs> you should know one thing. I had today few Zed Hashim shows to choose. But I chose this one because it talks about the destruction of Sodom. I'll tell you one thing. Anytime you learn Torah, it's not learning Torah, then, okay, then, then happened, then. Not true, not true. These two Yimbach Shemam that are running New York right now, they are trying to do New York into Sodom, where your business, you are not the boss. Your house, you're not the boss. Your party, you're not the boss. Your restaurant, you're not the boss. I, I'm the boss. I'm the, I could do anything. I, I guess nobody, no respect to the guests. Not the, so, so this is this is what today we are here for, to learn Zera Shimshon and prove, 
prove how this Sodom behavior will be destroyed. And Bezad Hashem, the one that we vote for, he will win. Why? Because he wants Yesh Din ve Yesh Dayan. There's a judgment and there's a judge. There's Hashem. You do crime, you're responsible for your crime, my friend. You did something, there's a law and there's an order. This is why I chose this Zeresh Mishon. And with this Zuhud, the Neshama of Zeresh Mishon will help us. And the election will win and the world will be normally set as was before. By Zad Hashem. But I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. I said to myself, I had today very, I, I don't like to say my personal stories to anybody. It's not nobody's business. But I, <clears throat> anytime there's something scary in the world happens, <laughs> I have heartburn, big heartburn. One thing I had during Corona, and when, when that heartburn came down, that was the last day of Pesach, maybe a week after that, I said to my wife, I said to my wife, look, I have tremendous heartburn for two, three days, and now it's going away. It goes away, and the world will calm down. Why? Because every person is a small world. You know, you feel pain, the world is in pain. So today, during Shi'ur, before the Shi'ur Gemara, we had a lot of pain, and now Baruch Hashem, it went away. So it shows the whole Dadli Sad goes down, and the world will be fine, everything will be good. So we'll see Be'ezad Hashem tomorrow morning, a lot of miracles, that no question Chab will win. Why? Why? Because, because, he means Hashem. He doesn't mean fakeness. He doesn't mean personal power, me power, power to me, power, communism, no, he means Hashem. Once you mean Hashem, you will win. You could open the window, doors, no worries, and let's, let's look inside, we're going to fly through. Mm -hmm. And the reason why Hashem destroyed the cities of Sodom, who do me That's exactly compared to what it says by Dora Mabul. Al Pasuk, and Hashem said, and I will behold, destroy the land. Mashallah <coughs> this is compare <coughs> a parable. This is a, a parable compared to the king Shayalo Ben Umasadoto the pedagogue. Uh, a king had a son and he gave the son to pedag pedagogue teacher. When you have personal teacher to your son, when your ben, when your son does not behave properly, one second. Who will you punch? Who will you punish? The son or the teacher? You will have a son, okay? A king has a son, and he gives son to the teacher, and says, listen, train him. King comes to his son, and sees not son, son not, not trained. Doesn't have that inheritance, doesn't have, uh, you know, a looter, like, you know, breaks through everything, steals everything. A king wants to punish his son. He's going to punish his son, he's going to punish the teacher. Teacher, why? Why teacher? Why teacher? He didn't? He didn't do his job. So what happened now? Kisha selacha ben mi nilke pedagog nilke. Who will get hurt? The teacher will get hurt. Vafkan here also ho'il sheikar hatam sheikar chataam lo haya ela mechamad lo tova. Why people sin during Noach's time? Because they had too much good. When people have too much good, they forget about the ship. What caused them this? The land. They would have double, triple grain, double, triple apples, fruits, vegetables. There was too much, too much good. <coughs> Abundance of everything caused them to lose themselves and they start sinning left and right. Hashem said like this, who punished you? Who caused you to sin? Land? Zimla? The land? I will punish the land as well. And the whole land got disappeared. What happened? Under the ground. This is why we have Sodom. Uh, this is why we have salt water. Uh, how you call that? Dead sea. Dead sea. Because that was the Sodom. Sodom was Dead Sea. When Mashiach comes, Sodom will not going to be anymore Dead Sea. It's going to be the city of Sodom as before. Now they're doing their kapara. This is why the water carefully, carefully goes less and less. Why? Because eventually the world is fixing itself carefully. You have to know, respect the guest. So don't want to destroy their guests, and this is what happened to them. <coughs> so it says, <coughs> Hashem said, I'm going to punish the land. And what was, what's the punishment? You cannot plant nothing in the Dead Sea, and nothing will grow there. And you cannot harvest nothing. Why? Because it's Dead Sea. It's dead land. Hashem cursed it. Hashem said, no, nothing will be growing there. Over there was the destruction of, there's an individual destruction, there's a like, uh, how? General. General, thank you very much, that's the word. General destruction. In Sodom, they made general destruction. 
Hachi, Mishum Hachi, Chazal v'tikein ha'olam. Hashem said like this, I'm going to fix the world. What is that fix the world? By destroying Sodom. You destroy Sodom, you fix the world. Okay? You destroy, I mean, you throw away the Democrats and the world gets fixed. Why? Because why they give you permission to come and rob your store? Sodom. Your things are not yours. I could do whatever I want. I come to your house. I come to your family. I come to your wife. I come to your daughter. You know, this is how it goes. This is how it goes. And Asher says, no, nah, no, nah, that behavior doesn't go. The way I destroyed Sodom then, I'm going to destroy Sodom this generation. Is today it's going to happen. You'll see. You'll see. Masha Enken Hacha. How he here is not so. Shayakil Kulperati. But here in Sodom was over there by Lot. What was there? General. Asher wiped out there. But here is what? Individual, the, the city of Sodom. The old Shar Jomedet Alam Mishpat. The world is standing on what? On judgment. Whoever makes no judgment, they are digging under the world. I should say, dig under the world, you're going to go under there. The world will stay with the judgment. So, therefore, I'm giving you another proof that today you'll see good news by Zad Hashem. <coughs> Next, the Khan Ad Rabbah, but here, opposite, Arba Dayene Havu Besedom. In Sodom, there were four different judges. So if so, what happened then? Why they get destroyed? We go free to Ash, and then says Zerashim Shon says, "Go free to Ash." You know, go free to Ash. You know, Miss, uh, what? Sulfur. What is that? What is that? What is that? Tell me. It looks like a salt rock. Yeah, sulfur. It burns. It burns. It's like a salt. It's like a salt, exactly. Hashem made sulfur fall <coughs> like, like, hail? like hail and acid rain, exactly. Acid rain, it's yellowish, exactly. And with fire, wow. banging on their head. That's how it kills them? Al, al, kil Why? Because with heat stuff, you sinned. You ruin things with the heat. Heat sin. You know, sometimes person makes a sin with the uh, tahtidi. When you sin, when you when you sin with a heated heart, Hashem says, "I'm going to send you punishment." Also, heated ones. Kilkubav uberutachin nidonu kador hamabul kador hamabul, and they were and they were uh, <coughs> with the heat judged like the generation of the flood. Umakata sanverim. But what happened to them? They got also blind. They got punishment of the blindness. <coughs> Why? Because they sinned with their eyes. How? They had bad eyes. They desired somebody else's money. They desired wives of their friends. And Hashem says, you desire after your eyes. You're going to get hurt on your eyes. Therefore, the rule is, the salt from the Sodom will get person blind. This is why we do, one of the reasons we do my Macharim Why? Because maybe salt on your table is from the Sodom. If that salt touch your eye, it could make you blind. Mm. This is the reason why, why salt of Sodom makes person blind. Because people of Sodom, they ran after their eyes and they got punished because of their eyes. And that salt over there against person's eyes. Why? Because that is midak and midak for the eyes. Makes you blind but on the eyes. Make sense? Yeah. Makes sense. Let's go for it. Huh? And that's my question. Why you hear such a good Hidush? You don't dance. This is dance. This is a proof for life. You hear 20 years. If salt of Saddam touch your eye, make you Why I? Why not tongue? Tongue also something burn. No, I. They ran after their eyes, and this is why. What? What are you saying? Why are you supposed to do my after each meal or after each um, time you eat bread or only with the zimun? When you finish the meal. Any meal or? With the bread. With the bread. No bread, no, no, no. No bread, no. Huh? If you're saying one person or zimun with three people with zimun. Even you do Birkat Amazon alone. Yeah. Because once you make hamotzi, you have to make my macharonim. Either way, you you with three people, not three people. וזהו הטעם שהמלך שדמית משמע את העיניים, לפי שהמלך מגין על הפורענות, because salt helps for the suffering, כדלקמן בסמוך, it says לאירן, והפורענות הראשון 
שלא הגין עליהם המלח, and the first suffering didn't help salt, שהייתה מכת הסנוולים. Why? Because, because Hashem sent them blindness. And therefore, the soul did not save them from the blindness. Next piece. Ve- oh, then also, Kshem, Sheit, Eman, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Toma, Tova, Me'en, Olam, Aba, Hav Hashem. Hav Hashem. Gave them taste of goodness of Olam, Aba. Their fields start growing many, many things, good things, abundance. By the way, by the way, I'm sorry, I did not say specifically. During the flood, before flood, they would plant one year and 30 years they would get produce from this. 30 years before flood. So Hashem gave them the good from Olam Abba. Now look at this. Kshem sheit iman HaKadosh Baruch Hu Tova me'en Olam Abba. How Hashem gave them good from Olam Abba. K'mo she'amru zal, as Chachamim say in Zohar, Parashat Vayela, Page 109, Amud Aleph, Ala Pasuk, Kegan, Hashem, okay? Kach it iman ra'am en genom. Same thing, Hashem gave them bad from genom. Hashem does good from Gan Eden, Hashem gave them bad from genom. Shehu choshech vetzal mavet. This is darkness and the shade of the death. Punishment. Ve'imtil alem esh. And Hashem rent to them fire. The fire was hitting with a salt, big piece of salt. How do you call that? Sulfur. Sulfur and fire on it. It would heat them and burn them, okay? What do you say? What do you say? Skila. Skila and what? Serefa. Ve'imtil alem esh, isho shel genam. The fire of genam, yes. So before the flood, actually, I remember they would plant etik. Um, they would plant seeds, right? Let's say they wanted to, like, since uh, Hashem was about to erase humanity, they would plant, um, let's say, let's say they wanted to plant, like, pickles or something, then they would get buckwheat out of that, and then you show, like, everything would become different because the soil was, at the, you know, becoming corrupt. more corrupt. corrupt. Yeah, that's why he brought the flood. They didn't know where their kids were coming from. Either. Very good. Very good point. Very good point. I forgot to mention this. Very good. Thank you. Oh, wait, so don't also have the same system, right? Huh? Uh, it's a you would also plant something. They were also very, very rich in something, right? Yeah. So you, you were saying before the flood, that the way it was growing. Now we're talking about Sodom. Sodom. Now we're talking about Sodom. Right. It would grow the same way, right? The gofrit and rocks of sulfur, lefi shelo hirgishu b'chayem la'asot shuva. Why Hashem gave them this? Because they didn't feel that they need to make teshuva. I'll tell you one thing. If you want your tefillah to be answered ever in your life, first do teshuvah and then do that. Today, before voting, anybody do teshuvah? Hashem, I'm sorry for my sin, then do walk. Before what? Before voting. You have to be clean highway when you pray to Hashem. What cleans highway? Teshuvah. Kedita be midlash laba, and says in midlash laba, pasuk, va Hashem imtil, and says in midlash what? And Hashem made it rain. Let's go. Amar Rabbi Yudin. Whoever smelled sulfur, <coughs> if you smell it, this is one of the things that make your neshama scared. You feel very terrible inside. Why? Why? Toxic smell. Toxic smell. Look what it says over here. Rabbi Yudin said, why when people smell it, why? Why when people smell it, their soul becomes trembling? Lama? Because a rasha in Genam will be judged by the sulfur. So Neshama feels the terrible judgment after 120 with the sulfur if he has a shon lives from this world as a rasha. So if person lives this world as a rasha, the sulfur will be one of the things that is going to be judged by the sulfur of the ge- fire of the sulfur in Genam. I mean, I didn't invite you here to scare you because listen to me. At the night, when people say, don't walk in the street, you come to learn Torah, <coughs> you're the biggest tzaddik in the world. And you have bigger connection to Hashem than anybody. So what I'm trying to tell you is, 
This is what I'm teaching you. I'm not, I'm not teaching you, I'm sorry. This is what I'm trying to explain to you what Zer Hashem Shon says is because I want you to understand anything you smell, anything you taste has a reason behind it. You smell something and it gives you uncomfortable feeling means your neshama is scared of that thing. This way you smell that. Okay? Let's go further. Vekashem. And it's difficulty. Why in this world remain this sulfur, which is sign of genom? Davka bechushel alech, and it's your wear and the, the smell of smell and the sense of smell. Why? Because again, she averot she baze achush hem yoter meat mishar achushim, and sinning with the nose it's much less category of sinning than other ones. Tell me, when you get more benefit of sinning with the eye when you sin or with the nose when you sin? Of course, with the eye. When you see with your ear or you see with the nose, you hear Lashon, oh, let me hear more, like, you know. With the nose, not so much. Nose is very the least, less. The least one. The least one. You don't smell this? Huh? <laughs> let me tell you something. There is some, there is some, one second. There is some Avodazara, they stay in the middle of Manhattan streets and they make spices over there. If you pass by just to smell it, that is our Zara in German. Number one, number two, what? number two, yeah. number two. You know, you know, this woman who lives in your building. Let's say she <laughs> takes shower in her French, perfume, French and you say, "Oh, you know what? She's walking now. Let me walk after her, and I'm gonna smell that thing." That also. <laughs> so if I smell the perfume, and I know which your nose enjoying, huh? This is one of the terrible yeah, things, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I smell it in, in, the, in, in the lobby. I know, or in a, I know it's her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, Problem. Does it please you or does that, it upset that. you? So <laughs> what do you do is, <laughs> Malayalan, <laughs> Malayalan, if you want to go home at 11 o'clock, ask three more questions. Uh, one thing I'll tell you, I'll tell one thing. This is the point when you go, like smell it out. Like, Hashem, I don't want to smell this garbage. Right, right. Another thing, another thing. This is the reason why men should not be working in Landramat. Why? <coughs> when woman brings her clothes and he hangs it, he could look at the clothes and think about her. It's a problem. Okay? Yeah, it's a problem. But if he takes clothes from woman and he doesn't know those women, or he works in the back and his wife accepts one woman, and they put the stuff, and he doesn't know who's this, then it's no problem. Same thing with dry cleaning. Yeah. Same thing with dry cleaning. I mean, yeah, of course, same thing. Same thing. When you look at woman's dress, the woman that you know, you get desire. It's not just the thought, the thought. You're telling me it's a new dress if you live in Borough Park, in Bnei Brak, you're right, Borough Park, you're right, New York. <laughs> <coughs> Vies <coughs> Lomar Shamru Zao and some say that Chachamim say <coughs> and also we could say as our Chachamim say I'm sorry Dav Brachot Dav Mem Gimel Amud Bet Gemar Brachot page 43b Ezehu Davat Shana Shaman Ed Mimenu What is something that your Neshama enjoys from this in this world? And the body doesn't enjoy it all. This is smell. When you smell, your neshama enjoys, but body doesn't enjoy. <coughs> and also they said, Gemara Ta'anit, page 11a. Your soul gives testimony about you every day. And your soul knows if you enjoy from certain sin that you're not allowed to enjoy, your neshama knows that you have to pay for it. <coughs> But your body is swallowed up in the desires of this world. And always is thinking. And he thinks tomorrow is better day. <coughs> Therefore, when you smell, <coughs> only your neshama enjoys. Therefore, why you have suffered in this world? To smell it, this is the reminder wake to you. Up, wake up, wake up call. call from Geinom. So you remember the punishment 
חס ושלום, could be if person sins. וכשתעשה התראה אל האדם, when you make warning to a person, תיתן לו סימן זה, when you give him sofer to smell, and he feels, גיהנום, he remembers, וכיוון שמרגיש, אפשר שיעשה תשועה. When he feels it, he's going to make תשועה. That's the reason חסידים, they pray מנחה, אם דימדו מלחמה, when the sun is, when the clouds are, uh, when the sky is red. Why? They say this remind us the fire of Gehenom and they make Teshuvah. Mm-hmm. Second reason, when Hashem sits on his throne, the whole Shaman becomes red. Oh, you remember Shekhinah, he makes Teshuvah also to get connected to Hashem with happiness. So what are we trying to do here? Today, all of us sitting here learning this is the best Teshuvah ever. And Hashem should hear our Tefillot Amen. and put Donald Trump, our president, as a president for the next four years. Amen. And all that Hashem should be Yimach Shemam. And all the tzaddikim should be written in Sefer Chaim Tovim Arichud Yamim Veshanim. Thank you all for coming to the Shi'ur. Hashem should give you brachavah, slachavah, chenyel, and so on. Amen.